good morning students today we have come back to discuss the second part of the chapter on acids bases and salts for class 10th chemistry in the previous period we stopped the discussion at the point where we were telling that in class 10 we will have to know about the Arrhenius theory, Arrhenius concept of acids and bases. Uh, we discussed what was the theory and what were the shortcomings of it. Uh, let's recap a little. What did Arrhenius tell about, Arrhenius concept about acid is? Acid is such a substance that in its aqueous solution only its aqueous will dissociate and give out at least one H plus cation. And what is a base? A base is such a substance according to our heinous concept which dissociates in its aqueous solution and gives out a hydroxyl anion or OH minus anion. We also discussed the basic three shortcomings uh, that does, uh, does not make this theory fully comprehensive. Number one, unless a substance is soluble in water, Unless it is in its aqueous solution, unless the solvent of the solution is water, it might be something else, something might be soluble only in alcohol or an ammonia solution. No, our heinous concept will not define what is an acid and what is a base in those cases. It will only define an acid and a base only when the solvent is water, in fact only in aqueous That is the first uh, shortcut. Second was that there are lots of compounds which have hydrogen in them. Hydrogen is a part of them. But not always that hydrogen is dissociable as H plus I, even in water, like alcohol, like glucose. They are soluble in water, but in water they do not dissociate and give out a H plus I. So Arrhenius theory will not tell you, in spite of being soluble in water, in spite of having an aqueous Arrhenius concept will not tell us whether these things are acidic or basic. And number three, the most important drawback of Arrhenius theory. Since it has taken water as the solvent to prove whether certain substances are acid and certain substances are base. So it does not, it can never explain what water is. It cannot explain the nature of water itself. So with these points in mind, we will go into today's topic. Uh, before that, just look at this slide to have you uh, have these things in your mind, right? According to Arrhenius theory, an acid is a substance which in its aqueous solution dissociates or we can say ionizes to give out H plus ions. An acid which is completely ionized in water is a strong acid and the one which is only partially ionized is a weak acid. H2SO4, HCl, hydrochloric acid, HNO3 that is nitric acid are some of the strong acids. And according to 
or any as theory a base is a substance which in its aqueous solution dissociates or we may say ionizes to give out hydroxyl OH anion minus ions. The base which is completely ionized in water is a strong one and which is only partially ionized in a, is a weak one. Potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide are some strong bases. You see, the bases which are soluble in water, they are usually uh, very strong bases. And water soluble bases are special, have a special name, we call them alkali, but we will talk about it later on. The main shortcomings, faults, drawbacks of our Arrhenius theory. Number one, they are applicable only to the compound soluble in water. Uh, unless the compound is soluble in water, how can we know whether it is acid and base? But there are compounds which are not soluble in water and base. We will give you an example of that. Second point, uh, they do not give us a clue to the nature of substances which has hydrogen in them, but that hydrogen is not uh, is not dissociable, like alcohol, like glucose. They also have hydrogen in them. We don't know. Uh, they are also water soluble, but they are not acid according to our ideas. We will also give an example for that. And the third point is that since it takes water as the main solvent, so it does not clarify about the nature of the water itself. And we will learn in the upper classes that water is amphoteric in nature. It shows both basic and both acidic characteristics. Such substances that show both acidic and basic characteristics are called amphoteric. Let us look at the examples of these faults. Here is an example where you see that uh, water in which hydrochloric acid solution has been given. It is acid. So the hydrochloric acid H is dissociable. But in the second picture we have glucose solution where C6H12 O6. There are 12 hydrogen atoms but they are not dissociable. So when we connect a battery and a bulb in the water solution, the bulb glows because it has become acidic and the, uh, because the hydrogen has dissociated. But it is not an acidic solution while that glucose, it is soluble in water, but it has no dissociable hydrogen. So the bulb does not glow here. Arrhenius acids, one of the shortcomings is this one. Now the second experiment you have seen that you, if we uh, uh, mix strong sulfuric acid in a, a hot tube that concentrated uh, sulfuric acid on some sodium chloride, what will happen is that HCl gas, HCl not solution, HCl gas will be produced. You see in the second picture how through a rubber cork and the glass pipe HCl glass is passed. Now this is gas and has no water in it. It is not in the aqueous solution. Now if you put a dry blue litmus paper in that HCl gas, there will not be a change of color because it is not in the aqueous solution. But the moment you shock the blue litmus paper a little in water, and put it before the HCl gas, it will turn red because now it is in connection with the water molecules in the litmus paper. So this is the second fault where we don't see that unless a substance has water in it, it does not show acidic or basic nature. Uh. In the previous video, we stopped uh, discussion at that point when we are discussing what this H plus ion is. And today we are going into a little detail 
we will differentiate a little between H plus ion and H plus aqueous Let's first see this A hydrogen. Hydrogen means we are talking about the isotope of ion hydrogen which is most abundant in nature that is protein. Protein is 99% of the hydrogen available in nature is protein. Now this protein is the unique element which has the same mass number and same atomic number. That means in the nucleus it has only one proton but no neutron. So if this be the nucleus and it has plus one charge in the nucleus, so it will have only one cell that is the case for its electron which it needs only one. This is the protein atom. Now it is very precarious. Let's uh, look at the electron configuration also. It has one electron in the KSL. And since the K cell is complete with only two electrons, so this protein atom can be uh, can take three ways. It can acquire one more electron to complete the duplet of K cell and become one minus anion. H1 minus N. It can also leave this only one electron and become H plus cation. And it can also share this one electron in the outer orbit with some other element that needs that uh, share to form a covalent bond. In fact, it can form an ionic bond or it can form a covalent. Let's take one more element. Let's take chlorine. The chlorine, you know that it has two electrons in its case in A in N cell and in N cell in cell. Now it looks like something. It has plus 17 charge that is nucleus I am leaving out the neutrons I am leaving out the K and L cell I am only saying the outer cell outer cell D it has 7 electrons it will be like this here is 1, 2 electrons 2 electrons and 2 electrons here is 1 electron so chlorine will need one more electron to complete the octet of its M cell. And hydrogen I already shown that it needs one more electron to complete the duplet of the K cell. Now suppose this hydrogen it comes and shares the outer cell electron with the one electron in the outer cell of the chlorine. Now you see the chlorine has completed the octet of M cell and hydrogen has completed the duplet of K cell. So it is now ACL a covalent bonded molecule. It dissociates and B 
because hydrogen and chlorine they become ions because now you see this hydrogen it has left is only one electron in the outer cell with the chlorine to make the end cell in chlorine eight electrons so now it is cl minus it has minus one charge it's an anion leave the point look at the ion hydrogen now it's h plus and it is what it is it is only a proton a simple proton right and this simple proton cannot stay by itself it must go to somebody else some other charge of positive charge what we need to let's see. we have leave chlorine let's take we have already another molecule in water what is that h2o what is it o has two electrons in its case and six electrons in its case right and so when we say hydrogen and oxygen it has two halides they will combine into h2o what happens is that let's take this o uh, which has plus eight charge in the nucleus uh, we got the neutrons and the other cells we will talk about only the else it has six electrons in it if it combines with one hydrogen it shares one with this hydrogen and another unit this hydrogen it becomes H2O molecule now you see this H2O molecule is in the water and one when we put a cl in it it has dissociated into one h plus proton and chlorine ion minus ion and this h plus uh, proton it is looking out for some association it cannot it's only a proton it cannot stay alone it must be attracted to something else now you look at this two electrons and two electrons this pair of electrons in this molecule in oxygen they are not uh, neither stay or not shared they are not in any way bonded in chemistry we call such pair of electrons a lone pair of the electrons is which are not bonded in any way this extra proton will be attracted to this one of these pairs of electrons and loosely bond with it very loosely attach it itself with one of these lone pairs of electrons what will happen is that it was already h2 o and now one more proton has attached itself loosely but it is there so now the h2 a molecule of water it will become an ion hco plus because no electron has increased one proton has increased so one plus charge is there and this hco it is also plus one charge with one loose proton attached to it with 
call this this we call the aqueous ion that is H plus aqueous we have a definite name for it also we call it hydronium ion that is H plus aqueous ion so what will happen now? it will happen that now in that H2O and HCl in that it will be actually HCO plus and Cl minus solution and the more the HCO concentration will increase in it that means the acid put in it the more it will dissociate if it dissociates completely it is the strongest and if it dissociates only partly that means some of the H2O molecules remain some of the HCl molecules remain only a part of the molecules dissociate and make a few uh, H3OCl minus then it is partially dissociated in that case the acid was weak acid same is true about the base if it is completely uh, ionized in water at the OH minus hydroxyl ion, gets more and more the stronger that base is, and the less OH minus the weaker the base is. But that is beside the point for now. Let's talk about now. You have understood that H plus and which was a proton and H plus aqueous the difference between two and in fact that's where the main shortcoming or drawback of Arrhenius theory is that it explains axis and base only by accepting this H plus aqueous or HCO plus that is the same thing hydronium ion it does not explain acid and base purely on basis of an H plus proton and we have to uh, we, uh, you have to learn that in upper classes but as well we will touch it a little and also the how this OH minus hydroxyl ion comes before that what you have to learn up to now uh, you go through that through some slides right In its aqueous solution, an acid molecule dissociates or we may say ionizes to produce H plus ion which we have already seen is actually a proton. This proton attaches itself loosely with one of the two lone pairs of electrons of the H2O water molecule to form a HCO plus ion and usually we call it a H plus aqueous ion or hydronium ion. So there is a difference between H plus ion which is a proton and a H plus aqueous ion which is actually a proton loosely attached with the H2O molecule of water. One major drawback of Arrhenius theory is that it takes into account only the H plus aqueous ion and not broad conception of H plus that is a proton only to explain the acids and bases and that's why we have to elaborate a little more to uh, a little more about this H plus ion concept which we must do from bonstead lorry theory. Yes, uh, let's now talk a little about between, uh, the difference between this H plus uh, ion and H plus aqueous hydronium ion. What is the difference does it make? And also talk a little about this hydroxyl ion. Uh, because if we accept that H plus ion is the main difference, 
lives between an acid and a base, not the aqueous. Then we elaborate the same Arrhenius theory, but we elaborate it to the point that it also accepts ammonia, alcohol, etc., the other students, into account. And it also can explain water, the nature of water as acid or base. So we are now coming to a, uh, a little advanced theory that you will not need in this period, in this class. But we are touching it a little. We call it bronze state. Bronze state glory. Concept of acids and bases. Bronsted glory concept of acids and bases are very simply put. According to that concept, acid is a substance which is a proton donor that in a, in a chemical reaction donates a proton. And a base is a substance according to Bronsted body, which is proton acceptor in a chemical reaction the substance that donates a proton is an acid and the substance that accepts that proton is a base. All Arrhenius acids are brought Bronsted lorry acid, but Bronsted lorry acids and bases are a little more because it is accepting H plus only the proton, not only the aqueous proton, but the H plus proton by itself. And so now the uh, theory becomes a little elaborate. What happens is that? that look at the simple exercise. Suppose there is CA, which is an acid we know, and we combine it with uh, ammonia, which is a base by nature. What happens is that the reaction creates NH4 plus ion and chlorine minus. Look at this. Bolster glory concept goes one step further. Here it explains the acid distillation without water. It is uh, doing that in ammonia solution. Ammonia, ammonia, iron. But Bronsted Lorry also says that an acid, it acts as an acid. Acid acts as an acid only in the presence of a base. And the opposite is true. A base, it acts only as a base in the presence of an acid. An acid donates a proton but that proton must be accepted by some other substance and this substance which accepts that proton is the conjugate base of that acid which had donated that proton. Conjugate acid base. Conjugate acid base the acid that donates a proton and the base that accepts that proton, they are the conjugate acid base. According to a Bronsted Lorry concept, very simply put, there is a difference of one proton. Difference of 
one proton between the conjugate acid and base according to constant theory. What happens is that. Now this look at this simple equation. Here this HCl which if we accept it as acid, we must accept this as the base because it has one proton it can donate one proton to that. We call these acid and base this one and this one according to uh, Brosted logic concept, conjugate acid and base. In the same way, this one has one proton more than this one. So, according to a Brosted logic concept, this ammonia ion and ammonia, these two are conjugate acid and base. Now, according to this concept, you see, the same thing acid and base according to Arrhenius theory, it becomes a more elaborate and it also accepts the nature of uh, what? That is the point I actually want to make with the, a little uh, bit touching the little bit on this advanced theory. You will not need it in the class, I am stressing again and again. But as well, we look through a few slides about the uh, definitions which you may remember and then we go into the actual part that I want the point to make, right? According to bronsted lorry concept, an acid is a substance which can donate a proton, not merely aqueous proton, but a proton. Acid is a substance which can donate a proton in a chemical reaction. A base is a substance which accepts a proton in a chemical reaction. And conjugate acid base according to Bronsted Lorry. An acid acts as an acid only in presence of a base and a base acts as a base only in presence of an acid. These are called conjugate acid and base. Uh, simply put, such a pair of substances, conjugate acid and base, have the difference of only one proton in their chemical formula. Look at this equation. Here, ammonia aqueous solution plus H2O molecule. It makes ammonium ion and hydroxyl ion. According to Bronsted lorry you notice the difference between the H2O and OH minus ion. One proton is more in H2O. So H2O is acting as acid and the conjugate base is the OH minus hydroxyl ion. In the same way NH4 plus ion has one proton more than NH3 molecule. So NH4 plus aqueous ion, ammonium, it is acting as conjugate acid to the conjugate base of ammonia molecule. So uh, let's talk a little more about the same thing. Suppose we are mixing that uh, aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid. We were mixing like this. HCl plus H2O and it had, was happening like this that H3O plus and Cl minus. According to Bonstead Lorry theory, the aqueous solution with the aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid, what happens is that this acid has a conjugate base in chlorine ion and this has one proton more than a water molecule so this is acting here as conjugate acid of the base water molecule so now we come 
to the part where we actually try to explain the nature of water uh, and that's why, uh, that's how we can explain the OH minus ion also. Just look at these two uh, equations also. Here you see that this one and this one has the difference of one proton. So it is the conjugate acid of this conjugate base. And in the same way, this has one proton more than this one. So here the water is acting as an acid. Remember water was acting as base here. Water is acting as acid there. Right? Look at this one. This has one proton more than this one. So these two are conjugate acid and base. And this one has one proton more than this one. So these are conjugate acid and base. Look at those again. You see that HCO3, here it is acting as acid. HCO3, it is acting there as base. So, according to Bernstein body theory, the same substance can act as an acid or a base. According to the substance it is reacting with, and such a substance is called amphoteric. Such a substance which can act both as acid and a base are called amphoteric in nature. And water is such an amphoteric substance. We have already seen it, but we will now see what happens when we talk of pure water according to Bronsted theory, theory because unless we uh, know the nature of water itself. That's why the Arrhenius theory is a little shortcoming is there because it cannot explain the nature of the solvent because it has taken water as the only solvent of acid and base. Uh, just look at this slide of the amphoteric definition about amphoteric and then we go to the next one. A substance that may act either as an acid or as a base according to the nature of the substance it is reacting with. Such a substance which may act both as an acid and as a base according to the nature of the other reactant. It is called an amphoteric substance. Water is amphoteric by nature. Let's look at the explanation. Yes, pure water. What is pure water? Let us imagine it is a mixture of H2O molecules. H2O is interacting with each other. Boston body concept is that in pure water, water molecules loosely ionize themselves into H3O plus that is hydrogen ion and OH minus that is hydroxyl ions. They stay like that. The more the hydronium ions are increased, it becomes acidic, and the more the hydroxyl ions increase, it becomes basic but impure water. These hydronium ions and hydroxyl ions are equal in their concentration. We call it pH and also uh, pOH. Concentration potent of hydrogen and potent of hydroxyl. They are same 
in the pure water. It's a uh, kind of mathematically we can prove it. The branch of mathematics we call it logarithm. But that's later. I'm talking about it later. But first look at this one. Here you see that this water molecule say it has lost a proton and it has become OH. It has one more proton than this hydrogen. So it is acting as the conjugate acid and base. And the same way this has hydronium. It has one more proton. So it is acting as the conjugate acid and base. The same water molecule. Water is amphotonic in nature. When it has been experimentally proved, experimentally it has been uh, proved that in pure water, this potential means actually power, concentration. Hydrogen concentration and hydrox concentration. This must be the same. What is the number? By experiment, we have found that it is 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 7. Molarity, you have not come across this concept molarity, but we are doing a little more. Just uh, remember these things, that is enough for this class. At 298, Kelvin temperature. Temperature is important. If the temperature increases, temperature decreases the concentration of uh, hydronium ion and hydroxide ions also increase or decrease. So if this is the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide, 10 to the power minus 7. So you see, we can write it briefly like this. That in pure water, H3O plus, uh, it is into OH minus. Both are 1 into 10 to the power minus 7. So it will be like this 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 7 uh, whole square equal to 1.0 into 10 to the power minus 14 7 plus 7 m square molarity square. This we express, since it is very, very uh, minute in number, if you go about it in the exponential way, 1 divided by 1 upon 14, that is 10 upon 14, that is uh, 14 zeros upon 1. So minute fraction, that we express in another way through logarithm, we call that pH or pOH is actually the negative log. Negative log of 10 to the power minus 7, that is 7. Uh, you will learn about the detail of logarithm and etc. in the upper classes. It's a beautiful uh, concept where chemistry all the chemical reaction concepts combined with the formulas and fundamental operations of mathematics. Chemistry and mathematics react with each other it's, and creates a slide, dissolve into each other. It's a magic. If you want, you can go through the nets and internet to look up a little about this thing, how this logarithm scale has been done. But here we only learn this much that in pure water at 
35 degree Celsius. If it increases temperature, increases temperature comes down. Whatever we divide it in a 14 point scale, right? And that 14 point scale is called the pH scale. pH scale, and we have also uh, devised an universal. indicator. It's a kind of paper that changes color 14 times. Just look, have a look at this. In pure water, concentration of H plus and OH minus ions are equal. The pH of a solution is inversely proportional to the concentration of H plus ions in it. That means uh, neutral substances have a pH of exactly 7. Acids or acidic solutions have a pH below 7. The less the pH number, it is more acidic. That is why we said inversely proportional. And bases the more the pH value is, the more basic it is. Bases have a pH over 7. Now look at this universal indicator. Universal indicator is actually, it is also a dye. But it is made from many kinds of dye so that in defined pH scale of acid and base, it defines, it gives defined color from very much acid that is that the 1 pH to 14 when it is very strongly alkaline it turns from red to purple gradually step by step and here you can stop the screen and look at the exact colors you see the dark red to violet actually uh, in 14 this step by step it changes the color and uh, you can stop the screen and look at them at more closely. It is in your books, obviously. And some pH value of very common substances. Like you see, the doctor uh, sometimes takes, now look at the number 11. Saliva in your mouth. Before you eat, it is 7.4. But after the meals, it is 5.8. In the same way, your blood has 7.4. That is the average usual normal your gastric ju juices you can look at number three it is 1.4 so you can understand that it is acidic it has less uh, ph value whereas when you get more acid in your uh, stomach you feel very uncomfortable look at the number 18 milk of magnesia that is actually antacid anti-acid that you take that is to neutralize the acid it has high pH value of 10.5. It is a strong base. Like that, you uh, can uh, go through and here is pure water, that is number 10, which is in the middle 7, right? So it is obvious that from 0 to 7 is acidic and the acidity is in decreasing order from 0 to what 7. Basicity is in increasing order. And again from 7 to 14, the basis is increases the maximum basis that it says as 14. According to the scale or the indicator scale we have devised, 7 is the neutral point where that you understand water, pure water, where the both concentration are same, equal. In, uh, amount of their concentration modality. Now, we look at how this scale helps us in our daily life. That is the main point of learning science. How does it help in living our lives in a better way as a person, as a family and as society. So now let's look at those slides which will tell you 
that how this PA scale it comes into actual use of our daily life. Please look. Our stomach has dilute hydrochloric acid that helps us digest food. Sometimes excess acid is produced when we take too much junk food, oily food. This excess acid causes indigestion. We feel uncomfortable. As a cure to neutralize this extra acidity, we take antacids, antiacids, obviously some base, like magnesium hydroxide, we call it milk of magnesia, or sodium hydrogen carbonate. We also call it sodium bicarbonate or uh, baking soda. This being basic in nature, they neutralize the excess acid. When we take sugary food, too much sugar, uh, sweet food, the bacteria in our mouth break the sugar down and produces acid. Tooth decay starts when the pH of acid formed in mouth falls below 5.5. The below, the lower it becomes, the more acid it becomes. When it is past 5.5, lower than that, our tooth becomes to decay. Usually the toothpaste contains, you understand, bases. Uh, usually of pH value of about 8 to neutralize the mouth acid. And we should also wash our mouth after eating sweet food with lots of water. Because we have seen that water also acts as a base. Most plants grow well when the pH value of the soil is close to 7, almost neutral. But you know the overuse uh, for different natural reasons, the pH of soil can go down to 4 or rise up to 8.3. Both are equally harmful for the crops to grow. So what we do is that if the soil becomes too acidic, you have seen uh, often the go from government or privately we test the soil before sowing a certain crop. If the soil is too acidic, we add bases like quick lime, calcium oxide or select lime that is calcium hydroxide or chalk, calcium carbonate. Opposite if the soil is too alkaline, that is basic, Al alkaline means it is water soluble base. We add decaying organic matter matter like manure, compost, this contain acidic material and neutralize the alkaline soil. Some interesting facts. Our body remains in perfect health within a very narrow pH range from 7 to 7.8. So a minor disturbance of the average body pH will make you sick. If the pH of rainwater is about 5.6, we call it acid rain. A honeybee or an ant, they have acid in their stings. So if a honeybee or an ant stings you, it is better to wash the area with soap water or rub baking soda if it is available. It will neutralize the acid. Opposite. A wasp, it does not have acid. It has alkali in its sting. So if a wasp stings you, it is better to rub the place with very uh, weak acid like lemon juice, vinegar. Right? Here are some uses of mineral acids. Mineral acids are usually the strongest. And they are produced and used in mass scale in industries. Sulfuric acid is used to manufacture of fertilizers like ammonium sulfate, paints, dyes, chemicals, plastics, synthetic fibers, detergents, explosives like TNT and car batteries. Nitric acid is used for making fertilizers like ammonium nitrate. Explosives again like with TNT, trinitro, toluene, dyes and plastics. Hydrochloric acid is also uh, used for removing oxide film from the steel oxy 
objects before they are galvanized we take out the uh, uh, from the steel objects the oxide film and for removing scale deposits inside the boilers when it is too much in use it is also used in to dye stuffs textile food leather industries etc and uh, you can say the important use of bases on the mass scale in the industrial scale sodium hydroxide is used in manufacturing of soap paper a synthetic fiber called rayon is also uh, uses this sodium hydroxide in the production calcium hydroxide which is select lime is used for manufacture of bleaching powder a very common substance you know that to sanitize you have seen its use wide use magnesium hydroxide is used as an antacid to neutralize excess acid in the stomach and cure indigestion it is also in very common drug that is uh, over the counter drug sodium carbonate is used as washing soda and for softening hard water sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate is used as baking soda in cooking food for making baking powders also it is used as an antacid to cure indigestion and it is also used in the soda acid fire extinguishers that we usually see in the public places like schools right and now we can easily understand what happens to an arrhenius acid base and salt look at it so now we know that if we put uh, water pure water actually it is in the form of hco plus and oh minus already in pure water if you put say hcl that is hs plus and cl minus and they dissociate and dissociate so the hs plus concentration will increase in already loosely ionized water molecules let us understand so this h plus concentration will increase and this solution will become acidic if all the hcl or the acid molecules are dissociated the h plus ion will be the most in that case we call it a strong acid and what happens if we had put say a uh, sodium hydroxide that is a base it would have dissociated into sodium and hydroxides so naturally in this solution the oh minus concentration will have increased and if all the base molecules would have dissociated it was a more OH minus than it will be the strongest base it is totally water soluble base and those bases are called alkali you know already that water soluble bases are called alkali in fact all arrhenius bases are al alkalis and if we had put both together so what will happen that this cl and na and this one they become extra water molecule so they will water will remain water but these two will together they will form nsl or a salt uh, that's how salt is prepared you know that from your previous class uh, period about the chemical reactions it is neutralization reactions so strong acid and strong base are those which completely dissolves dissociates and the number of h plus ion increases or the oh minus ions increases and when they together mix in at their solution they produce a salt and the water remains as water now uh, look at a list of strong acids and uh, strong bases please look here we have given you just as a sample the names of six strong acids and six strong bases acid like perchloric acid hydrochloric acid hydrobromic hydroiodic nitric acid sulfuric acid and lithium hydroxide sodium potassium 
calcium, strontium and barium. These are in order of uh, strength, they are the top of the list. But you can go uh, through NET to find more names of weak acid, weak base. Generally the mineral acids and bases are strong and uh, organic acids, they are weak. So students, we will need one more period now that we have uh, learned a little elaborately about what is acid and what is base. Now we will come to the properties of this acid and base. Uh, not all the properties but the basic reactions that you will have to learn in the state for your exam. And also the basic properties of salt. We will take one more period for that. Before that, you please learn what we have already taught very carefully, do the homework and get a little prepared to come back with uh, going through that reactivity series of elements so that we can explain the uh, reactions of acid and bases a little uh, more uh, clear. If you have forgotten about the reactivity series here, yeah, please note it, I am giving a bit recap, look at it. Reactivity series of metal, uh, let's say of elements, metal and not metals both. It is actually a column, uh, names of the elements retain in a column form. The most reactive metals or non-metals on the top and then coming down. We start with potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminium, carbon, you see it is non-metal but it is very high in the reactivity series and so is hydrogen. This we call reactivity series because the uh, upper element will displace the lower element, lower repressed element. The more reactive element will displace the less reactive element in a displacement or double displacement. Uh, reaction. Generally we can say that if you go through the uh, periodic table, general rules of acidity is that the more you go from left to right, left to right, you remember, you will remember that uh, the columns are called groups and the uh, horizontal lines, they are called the periods. If you go along a period from left to right, acidity will decrease. But if you go up to down, according to any column, the acidity will increase. The opposite is true for base. If you go along a period from right to left, the base will become weaker. And if you go from top to bottom, according to a column, the basicity will uh, decrease. These are the general rules. We will learn about it in this class 10 in the uh, later chapters. But as well, you have a general idea. That's, we, uh, that's why we introduce it here. So till the next video, be safe, be strong, be studious and do the homework seriously. Thank you.